that the church has for the world it is the gospel the gospel is holistic that's why jesus said the spirit of the lord god is upon me he has anointed me to preach the good news but also to do what to bind the brokenhearted to comfort those who mourn and to provide for those who mourn in zion god is shaking that which can be shaken so that what is unshakable may remain Haggai says when these men of God lived in their day they did not know that it would be recorded in the Bible that we are reading today what they were doing was just living for God one day at a time the cross represents the greatest adversity that one can experience Jesus endured the cross and overcame so that in adversity we may have hope every person is under pressure economies are strained left right and center how can we endure how can we stand strong from this moment and this is the prayer that i pray for you i pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and i pray that you will be rooted and established in love. We thank God for this opportunity that God has given us that we may appear before him and just engage in the word to listen to him and know what he's got to say to us all at such a time as this. It is a great blessing for me that the Lord has granted me this opportunity to come and share the word today. And so uh, I wish to welcome you to this time. Uh, it is a very special time. Today we take a new turn as we begin a journey through the book of Habakkuk. The book of Habakkuk. And the series we have titled it, Trust the Process God's hidden hand at work. Trust the process, God's hidden hand at work. And I will today be laying ground for this amazing book that speaks so profoundly to all of us in a time when the world is shaken. Does God have anything to say to us in such a time as this when our world has been shaken by COVID-19, for example. Does God have a word to help us today launch out effectively into this book? Allow me to make some historical background to help us understand what the book of Habakkuk is all about. And consequently, we will launch out into our reflection today. Now, Habakkuk was a prophet who prophesied just before the nation of Judah was taken to captivity. He was a contemporary of Jeremiah who was also disturbed by what was happening among these special people of God, the nation of Israel, at a time when they had been brought low because of sin. But there is a difference between Habakkuk and Jeremiah. Although they existed within the same time frames, the difference is that Jeremiah was a prophet called by God to bear testimony to the fallen and perverted people by proclaiming the truth and calling them to uh, repentance to avert the punishment, the judgment of God that was looming over the nation. Habakkuk, on the other end, was a prophet who bore the news, uh, rather, who engaged with God as a conversation. He was entirely in a dialogue between him and God. It is a heartfelt conversation we find there with God, where he pours out his heart to God to let, know God, the conf uh, to let God know the confusion he was feeling, as he saw the evil that was thriving in his country and to see that God may come and act. He also voices his frustrations because he finds God to be so silent and unmoved by
by the events that were happening at such a time. This is a serious reality. He complains to God that also when God decides to respond as a result of his crying and calling and waiting on God, God seems to act in ways that are not always consistent with his character. He wonders how can a just God use wicked people to punish a righteous nation, a special people. This is part of what we will be examining as we continue in this series. The book of Habakkuk is a journey between God and the fallen world. It is a journey the prophet takes with God in a world that is full of pain, sin, trouble, and confusion. And in this journey, God holds the hand of the prophet and molds him, preparing him to respond meaningfully in a situation that is otherwise taunting, painful, exhilarating, and not enjoyable at all to our hearing and understanding. It is a powerful reminder as we launch out, brothers and sisters, that in this journey we are taking in life, God is willing to take hold of our hands, to walk with us, to order our steps, and guide us onto the victorious end despite the challenges that we face. It is Vamon Maji who has said uh, concerning the book of Habakkuk that this book begins with a question mark. And we will be seeing that. It begins with a question mark and then it ends with an exclamation mark. It begins with a question mark because the prophet begins by questioning God. And after God has responded, at the end of the book, he expresses worship to God Almighty. He exalts the name of the Lord. What a fitting book, therefore, for us to engage and study in a 10-part series just to hear the message of the Lord God Almighty. Now, I will try to give us a brief understanding the book has three chapters, and these chapters basically form the three simple outlines that we think are important. Number one, we find in chapter one, the prophet wondering and questioning God. The prophet wonders and questions God in chapter one. In the second chapter, we find the prophet watching. We'll find that in chapter two. He says, I will stay at my watch and wait for, his, for him to hear what he will say and how he will answer. In the third chapter, we find the prophet who worships and rests. He worships and rests in light of what God answers and responds to him. So Habakkuk presents a most dependable message of hope for the righteous people in uncertain times. But there is something more. On the flip side, this is a scary message for the wicked whether they are self-professed heathens or Christian pretenders. Doom and judgment is spelled out in the same book. Today, our topic is God's timing. God's timing when God delays heart. God's timing when God delays heart. And as we prepare to read scriptures, I want you to begin pondering these three simple questions which will, we trust that by close of this chapter, which we finish next week, we will have answered appropriately. Has your life been interrupted by the uncertain circumstances that we are finding ourselves in? Pointedly, second question, how has COVID-19 disrupted your life? Is your life disrupted by COVID-19? The third and final question I want you to begin uh, to ask yourself is, how has the economic shift the world over disrupted your life? Keep thinking of those questions as now we read scripture. Habakkuk chapter 1, we'll be reading the first 11 verses. The Bible says, the oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long? O oh Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen. Or cry out, 
violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. God answers from verse 5. He says, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. I am raising up the Babylonians that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth, who sweep across the whole earth to seize the dwellings, uh, dwelling places, not their own. They are a feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honor. Their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than the wolves at dusk. Their cavalry gallops headlong. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like a vulture sweeping to devour. They all come bent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind and gather prisoners like sand. They deride kings and scoff at rulers. They laugh at all fortified cities. They build earthen ramps and capture them. Then they sweep past like the wind and go on. Guilty men whose own strength is their God. May the Lord bless his word. Listening to the story of chapter 1, it just opens your eyes to the question that the prophet Haggai raises. We say the book opens with a question and closes with an exclamation mark. We find the prophet beginning, I, I mean, I want you to picture yourself entering the presence of God and the first words that come out of your mouth is, how long? Anyone listening to you from the sidelines might wonder, what's wrong with him? But the prophet begins his prayer in that sense. And today I want us to examine two simple things. We will observe Habakkuk is a troubled prophet. And then examine God's response, which will begin today and flow into next week. Now, Habakkuk was a troubled prophet. He opens up by saying, how long, Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. That is Habakkuk 1 and verse 2. How long, those words, when you hear them, you immediately become aware of restlessness, impatience, frustration, displeasure. Something is not working right. Something is not complete. Habakkuk opens this vision with a question. And the question is loaded. He notes two things why he is raising this serious question in the presence of God. He asked this question because the prophet was troubled by God's, quote-unquote, indifference. Say indifference. You can say it better, indifference. Silence from God oftentimes magnifies our feelings of delay in our life's quests. The prophet was feeling like God had delayed to do something by the use of the words, how long? The first reason that troubled this prophet was that God was indifferent to his prayers. Or so we perceive, or so he perceived as he spoke these words out. You see, the prophet had called upon the name of the Lord, and the Lord seemed not to have listened. The prophet goes ahead from calling to crying out, but the Lord had not answered. What a bad combination. You call, you get tired of calling, you cry. And it does not seem to answer. As someone has said, some of us have prayed so much, the Bible says knock and it will be open to you. You stopped knocking, you are now banging on the doors of heaven. And you wonder, why is God not listening? Why is he not doing anything as regards to the cry that I'm raising before him? He says, Lord, I've been calling and I've cried but you do not answer. He had prayed 
for an unstated period of time. It was long, long enough to spark that serious question. You see, if someone comes to you and says, how long must I wait for you? It means the person is frustrated. He has been waiting for some time. Praise the Lord. And God apparently had said nothing about the situation until now, when now the prophet was speaking. One thing we pick apparently from this sense that God was indifferent is a sense of rejection. Every time we look at the prayer, we notice that Habakkuk seems to say, God, I have raised my voice and it seems to be falling on deaf ears. This is easily understood to be rejection. I know in life that when you engage with any person, if you talk to someone and the person keeps snobbing you, they seem to turn the other way, they do not listen, then you feel you are being rejected. You are not being given attention. And so the pro prophet was at that very point. I just want you to ponder this. Have you had moments when you felt like God was distant in your life? Have you had moments you felt God was far away, he was not close, he was not listening? I talked to some people, and uh, someone not long ago, and the person said, I feel like heaven is closed on me, and I do not know how to approach God. Do you ever come to such moments? Personally, I have. Actually, Don Moen does an amazing song. We call it, I will sing. And before he sings that song, he prefaces it with the words found in Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 16 down. And that is a chapter we'll be handling. He says, Lord, you seem so far away, a million miles or more it seems today. And though I have not lost my faith, I must confess right now that it is hard for me to pray. We all come to such moments. But I think what captured my attention yesterday was to reflect on a song that one Faustin Munishi sang many years ago uh, for those of you who may have had an opportunity to listen to it. The song is labeled Malebo. I don't know it was in uh, cassette number six or number seven. That is for your research. <laughs> I sang those songs, I think I knew them off head. There is a man he sings about and I think you remember such a tune. Now zunironi mimi zimbinalia Namulili amarebo amekata kuokoka nilizo imba ni nyingi nikimuonya malebo bado aja badilika sasa sembe nalia Do you remember such a song? Praise the Lord jipigie makofi. Wewe ni mhenga. Amen. That song was sung I thought it was just a message created like another person sang about uh, uh, another lady, uh, no, I forget that. Let me not go that direction. It will make me begin laughing on the pulpit here. But he sang that song, and yesterday I actually established that it was a real person called who? Malebo. Yesterday, and you need to go check the Facebook page of Faustin Munishi. He shares the testimony, Malebo Ameokoka. He is now born again. And he has done a song. The beautiful picture is this. He sings the song and Malebo is right beside him dancing to the song. When he talks about how Malebo alikuwa megongwa, the teeth were taken out, and now he was a man um, who was toothless, actually the man pulls out the plastic, what are they called? You know the fitting, the, the ones now that just to give him some shape? And he's happy, the man is bright on his face and he says, I praise the Lord. Now, I want you to imagine that since Munishi sang up to the time Malebo got born again, if Munishi had been troubled and said God was indifferent and he was not changing the situation of Malebo, maybe he would have given up even sharing faith with him. But as we speak today, praise the Lord, Malebo is a believer in the family of God. And answered prayers regarding the depravity of the souls of men sometimes wear us out. And we give up all too soon. So number one, Habakkuk was troubled by seemingly God's indifference. Secondly, Habakkuk was troubled 
by Israel's evil, Israel's sinfulness. You see, brothers and sisters, the increase of evil in the world that we live often makes us think that God has delayed in executing judgment upon the peoples of the earth. How do we find this? Let's take a look at Habakkuk. He was so troubled because of the evil that was so prevalent in Judah. He cries out and he says, Lord, why don't you answer when I cry out to you? Violence! There is a lot of violence in the house of Judah. Violence! You do not answer. Violence was the single word that the prophet used to describe the depravity of the nation of Judah. And he wanted God to act soonest. Amen. We pray sometimes, we decree and declare. Now! Let this thing change. And then, the thing keeps looking on. So where is God? The prophet was troubled, frustrated, and disturbed by this. You see, the truth is this. The northern kingdom had been conquered by the Assyrians. That is the northern kingdom of Israel. And now the southern kingdom, Judah, was about to be ravaged by the Babylonians and brought low. The reason? It was their sin. And truly, God had been kept at bay by the sins of the Israelites. So as he's waiting on God, wondering why is God silent? Why are we not hearing God? God was watching and sin was standing in the way. He, the prophet notes two things of particular importance that bring out the sinfulness of this nation. He says there is increased injustice in the land. Israel had become the archetype of evil, so much like we continually decry the pitiful state that our country is in. Brothers and sisters, if we were to remove the biblical names used in the book of Habakkuk and supplied the names that we live within, Kenya, Kikuyu, Thogoto, Kehunguro, you will be surprised. You will be surprised that that book will make a lot of sense concerning the situation in which our country is in. The evil that we find ourselves in. Corruption is almost our uniform, our daily food, our costume, our everything. And he talks about the injustice in the land. That is a small phrase that is loaded a lot with the many things that were going haywire in a country that was supposedly the special people of God. This thing disturbed Habakkuk. And he actually almost accuses God of tolerating wrong. He actually almost accuses God of tolerating wrong. He says, why do you make me look at justice? Why do you tolerate wrong? In fact, he accuses him in verse 3. He repeats that in verse 14, which we'll be examining next week. He is not even, God was not punishing. God seems to snob the sinfulness of Israel. Had God abdicated his duty? Does God care? Those are the questions he's asking himself. Has God slept in this situation? And for us today, we may begin asking ourselves questions like, has God slept on my case? Doesn't he see what is happening in our country? Can't he see how our, how our economy is being ravaged by the politicians? Doesn't he care about the, uh, the, the, the battles, the fightings we are hearing about in families? Every other day you look at news and you see anything passing around breaking news, be sure your heart will be broken. What is happening in our world? Why is God so silent? This was a desperate moment for the prophet that needed desperate action from God. Or is it not true, brothers and sisters, that desperate times dis demand for desperate action? He was in that l position. It was awkward, it was painful, and he longed for God to come and intervene in the situation. Friends, the timetable, the calendar, the timer, the stopwatch that this prophet Habakkuk was using was ticking faster than God's timetable. 
and it is understandable in a sense. He is not the only one. There are many other people in scripture whom we find who cry that God is slow in responding, in acting concerning the issues that these people face. Lazarus was dead. And before he died, a message was sent, Lord, the one whom you love is sick. And Jesus seems to have taken a leisurely delay, not rushing to the situation to salvage the moment. And he went finally when the man was dead and buried. But you see, that is why it was called a miracle. Because Jesus turned the situation right at the appointed time. Say appointed time. Appointed time. Praise the Lord. Jesus on the cross, the very dear son of God himself, having cried and said before he went on the cross, if it pleases you, Father, take this cup away from me. He was in a desperate moment. He needed the intervention of heaven. The Father looked on until Jesus said, not as I will, but as you will. And later on, we move on and we find um, Jesus on the cross finally nailed there. It is painful. He's been hanging, suspended in the air. And finally, he cries, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? That was not a pretending st statement. It was the reality. He felt forsaken. The father seems to have looked the other way in a most desperate moment when the son needed attention from him. This was difficult. So Habakkuk was not alone. But there is something I like about Habakkuk, which is a challenge I want to throw at you as I remind myself. Even when he had for long been waiting on God and nothing seemed to have changed, Habakkuk once more talked to God. He gathered himself, gathered some courage, walked over to the presence of God and spoke. So when we find him saying, how long? He is coming again. Amen. You, you would rather go make your noise in the presence of God rather than keep quiet and die from within. He comes to God. And this is a reminder for us. God invites us to talk to him in all the challenging circumstances of life. This is amazing. Although deeply troubled, he carried his frustrations to God. And we have to remember, we must never get tired. The Bible says Jesus gave a parable that men always ought to pray and must not give up. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1 down to verse 6. He gave a parable. Why? To teach you and I that we always ought to approach the presence of God. We must never tire. We must not give up in light of the prevailing circumstances that come to taunt our hearts, come to squeeze life out of us. Are you troubled over a relationship issue? Maybe you've been praying to God for a marriage partner or for a change in your marriage that it may be more stable. Have you been waiting on God for a job and it appears like every other day is a new beginning without a job? Has the staying of COVID bothered you and troubled you deeply? Yesterday there was a wedding here and my daughter, uh, Waridi, noting that she will not be able to come. Uh, was not very happy. And so uh, she, I saw her seated and uh, as a good father, I decided to interact with her. I could tell she's not very well. And so I walked over and said, Mom, how is, how is the morning? She said, fine. I said, you don't seem so happy. She said, yeah. I said, what could be the problem? She kept quiet for a minute and, a minute and then said, Corona. Wow. I just felt like laughing, but I kept quiet and realized that is a serious thing. Praise the Lord. 
So I asked her, what has Corona done? She said, can you imagine that we cannot go to church because of Corona? Okay. Can you imagine there is a wedding in church and I cannot go because of Corona? She's tired. And I agree with her. Praise the Lord. She's tired. Maybe that is what our children are going through. Maybe to ask you, when Corona came, how much did you pray uh, against it? So how are we praying now? Maybe we got tired. We have been asking the Lord, how long? When we are in trouble, brothers and sisters, we often feel we need quick answers. We want God to answer how long by saying now, immediately. But you see, he didn't imagine God was listening. And that is why we look at part B, which is very simple because we'll be continuing with it next week. God was at work behind the scenes. Amen. Through the human eye, nothing was moving, but inside, God was at, at work. Habakkuk 1 and verse 5, God responds. It even comes like a surprise. He just shows up. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you will not believe even if you are told. He had been waiting for God's voice and God now breaks out and speaks. Which is a reminder, God was not silent as Habakkuk thought. Even in the perceived silence, God was working. God was at work. Because silence is not exactly God's language. God is always speaking. Sometimes we miss to hear him. Sometimes we don't understand what he's saying. But he, nonetheless, is always speaking. Praise the Lord. God was not ignorant about the increase of sin in Israel and Judah. God knew exactly what was happening, every detail. And because his eyes cannot look on evil, he was working on a purging plan. He would come to cleanse the nation and he will bring judgment on the nation. He would send Babylon to bring Judah down because of sin and iniquity. Brothers and sisters, God does not assume evil. So the evil we see in the world, the troubles we see in our society, the pains we go through, wondering, we have been waiting on the Lord over this. God has not assumed those things. He pays close attention. He has a microscopic view into the details of what is happening in our world. And at the proper time, he will act. He will act. Praise the Lord. Often, sin is the impediment to the voice and action of God in the world. In our world, we are seeing God, what are we seeing God to be silent over? There are many questions we may not be fully in a position to explain, but I want to help you to be reminded that God is at work. Tell your neighbor, God is at work. Jesus affirmed this and said, my father is always at his work to this very day. That is in the book of John chapter 5, verse 17. My father is always at his work to this very day. And I too am working. Jesus is still at work. So even when there is a pandemic, even when the economic shifting has happened, even when there is a lot of increase of evil, where we are having people dying on a, every single day, God is at work. And he will exalt his will and purposes in a very special way. I want you to reflect on this as we finish worship team. You need to take your confusion and questioning to Jesus. Amen. I hold this theological position that if I have a problem, I feel against God and I want to complain, I will complain to him. He created me. He knows what I'm feeling. Amen. Be like Habakkuk. Talk to him. Tell him this is my frustration. Let him take a hold of you and walk with you. Praise the Lord. Talk it over to him. 
Don't complain about God. Complain to God. It is better. Amen. When prayers are delayed, when they are unanswered, hold on to the faithfulness of God. Habakkuk had seen God as being silent, but all of a sudden God speaks. God was not silent. God was working behind the scenes, and that is the great blessing that we have to follow. Praise the Lord. I want you to stand up as we finish. And therefore, you understand that God's delays are purposeful. They are intentional. They are helpful. We will continue next week as we explore the answer God gives and what it teaches us about the methods of God. So don't be frustrated. Just in a few minutes, we should be finishing this service. Don't be frustrated. Learn to depend on God. Usi choke. Praise the Lord. Usi choke. Why don't you lift your hands and we we'll sing together? Waka Tiwako Sakapo Fika Makuna Sakai Zoya Baraka Zako Usichoke 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 and express your trust in God. He is not late. Four days late, Jesus is still on time. And tell him, Lord, I trust you. I trust your plan. I know that you are not silent. You, are, you neither sleep, you neither slumber. You are in control of everything. You are in control of every situation. So Lord, help our hearts to really know and when we ask the question, how long? Oh God, you are still in control. You are fully in control. And you have an amazing plan concerning our lives. When we see evil and iniquity, when we see disease and ravaging that is destroying our country, when we talk of locusts and many other things that come to disrupt our lives, we know that you are on the throne. You are in control. You are sovereign. And you will establish your purposes and fulfill your plans concerning us. We thank you, Lord, and we praise your holy name. So help us to trust your timing. Help us to rest in your timelines. For in them, our purposes will be realized. You have not left us you are present with us. We give you praise and we worship you. We glorify and magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why don't we appreciate the Lord with a clap of ring? Amen. May the Lord help you and keep you. May he strengthen you and walk with you. Our dear visitors, we once again appreciate you for making time to join us in this service in a COVID season. We are very delighted you came and we trust that the Lord has spoken to you. Welcome to leave us with your details. We want to have a conversation and engage with you to know how we can be of ministry to you. 
uh, as the Lord enables us. May the Lord bless all of us. May he keep you. Thank you everyone who has served and ministered in this special day. And until next time, may the Lord keep us. And now we may share in the words of grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.